Don't create if you don't feel like creating. The best creating comes when you're excited and you're motivated and your inner creator is inspired. Hey there, welcome to today's episode of The Pursuit. It feels like it's been a long time, but it's only been one week, a hiatus from really any pursuit content. I took last week off going into the holiday weekend, and I'll share some insight as to why. I've got a really exciting, I think it's an exciting conversation to have today about building your content strategy, expressing yourself through your creator, your inner creator, and how that can help you on your pursuit and ultimately potentially build a brand behind yourself that will help you along the way. Things that I've really excited about, I've done a lot of experimenting, but I really do believe that you know, leveraging a personal brand for some people should be a part of the financial planning conversation. I definitely think for a lot of you on the pursuit, on your pursuit, that your personal brand and leveraging um, your creativity is going to be an important part of the pursuit. So I want to talk about kind of the whys behind it, some of my thoughts, and how to get things started. But before we get there, just kind of an update on what's going on with Pursuit content because I was flooding you with stuff on the daily and I said last week I took a break. If you listen to the last episode of the Daily Pursuit, you'll know that the Daily Pursuit is going on a hiatus for a while. I don't know how long. Um, Not that I'm not happy with the show, but I feel as if it served its purpose for the beginning of Pursuit and it's time to pause that form of content to focus my time and energy on other forms of content for Pursuit. But I want to share how valuable the Daily Pursuit was and why it was valuable because it'll, it'll feed into our, you know, the future part of our conversation. So the Daily Pursuit, you know, I started off with I just wanted to have as much content as possible, share as many thoughts as I can and help people move forward on their pursuit. You know, quality at the very beginning to get things going, get people to find the brand, see if they like the story and, and buy into what's going on and, and tune in. And after four months and over 120 episodes of podcasts for Pursuit, what I realized is the real reason for the Daily Pursuit was to help me fine-tune the messaging and find my audience within everybody out there. So Pursuit is going to have an overarching message that I believe will resonate and be relevant for anybody. And the initial overarching message is I want as many people as possible to find the passions in their lives and find a way to bring that into their life in a greater way, let passion be their guide and see where it takes them on their life. And ultimately, we have way more control over our destiny and our journey than we may realize. And I want to encourage people to, to find that and follow it. So that applies to everybody. But what I realized through the daily pursuit and those conversations and what I was reading and who I was talking to, what I was thinking about is that the content going forward will be a little bit more specialized, geared towards the creative or the creator, depending on how you want to say it. And I want to make sure that I don't go too narrow with creative because there are those of us, myself included, who identify as a creative that don't fall under the traditional definition of a creative person. Meaning, when I say creative, I've talked about this before, I think of an artist or a musician or a dancer, somebody who has an art form that they're putting out there. I don't really have an art form. I don't paint yet. I would like to try that sometime. Um, I doodle around with Keynote to create visualizations, but not regularly. Uh, but my creativity comes out in the form of the podcast and the video and writing. That, to me, is, is my inner creator expressing myself outwardly. And I want to encourage those that identify as the traditional creative or might be like myself to pour more into that creator and share that and let that become a voice that is heard by more people and see where it takes you. So the conversations, the guests are going to be more along the creative side. The way that I think pursuit will help individuals on their on their pursuit is going to be incorporating more of the advantages that creatives have in creating a personal brand, how that plays into the financial plan, what you can do with that, what should you be thinking about, and then again, finding that passion and following it and expressing yourself. So I think the overall march, overarching message will still apply to everybody, but I want the content to speak more to the creative. I would I envision that one day create pursuit is a you know a community of creatives across the globe that have a common connection that they're following their passions expressing themselves and the messaging and the you know the clothing that I create resonates with them and the brand is really known within the creative community but it still can apply to everybody so that's what the vision is 
And what I realized is the daily pursuit helped me come to that. And now that I'm there, rather than continuing to turn out as many podcast episodes as possible, I think it's time to peel back on quality and increase quantity. Increase the quantity of the, the episodes rather than having really short ones to hit you with every day. Save everything for Friday and have a really meaningful episode you only need to listen to once. Have really meaningful conversations and get more guests on. Because truthfully, I think the best podcast, at least that I do, are the ones where I'm talking to other people and less of me talking, even though the pursuit is always the Friday pursuit episode is always going to be me. More conversations with more creative people, you know, people who are following their, their passions, taking risks, betting on themselves. I want to have more conversations of their success stories and their failures to help all of you on your pursuit. So finding the time to do that and, and stealing that time from daily pursuit. So the daily pursuit served a purpose. It helped me build a, lot, a, a base of content. It helped me fine tune my messaging. It helped me find who my audience is. And now that I know it's tweaking the content strategy to be more focused to those individuals, drive up the quality, pull back on the quantity and move forward from that way. Now there may come a point where you know, there's enough stuff to do the daily pursuit again and I bring it back. And, and I will bring it back if it makes sense. But for now, it's time to pause that. So content-wise from Pursuit, Mondays you're going to get an episode. Friday you're going to get an episode. Periodically you're going to get a guest, uh, a podcast episode with a guest. You're going to get the weekly Pursuit every Saturday in your inbox. And then you're going to have Soulful Sundays over on our Amazon device uh, following the Pursuit on Alexa. So still a lot of content coming from us, but I hope with a little bit more time on my side, I'm able to increase the quality of what you're getting so it's more meaningful and pack a bigger punch and fewer pieces of content rather than doing a whole bunch of it. So that's kind of a, a quick update of the content of what's coming from Pursuit and what to expect and a little bit of the why behind it. Again, remember this, this show is kind of building in public and sharing with you the thought process behind the why so you can learn from the good decisions and the bad decisions I make going forward. Maybe stopping the daily pursuit isn't the best decision. We'll find out as time goes on. Which leads us in today's conversation about kind of leveraging your personal brand and doing so through creating content. I've had a number of conversations over the last few weeks with clients and prospective clients at RLS Wealth that have been centered around creating a personal brand or, or not really creating a personal brand. We don't create our personal brand. We share our personal brand. We've talked about it before. Your personal brand is just nothing more than your reputation, what you're known for, your expertise, who you are as a person, packaged up and shared with the world. So taking this brand that we have and being intentional with the way that we share it through content to, to drive attention to us and our causes and our businesses and so forth. One of my clients uh, you know, transitioning to the mortgage business and we're talking about how can we build a podcast to help him in his local area become the go-to person when it comes to real estate. It's not going to be all about mortgages. It's going to be about the real estate markets, which will be very valuable to him because it will create an audience of people who one day might need a mortgage. So they would reach out to him. It will help him network within his community of people who are in real estate to one day when they might have people to refer to him. Maybe he comes the expert because of the relationship that they build through the podcast. And then finally, kind of a bonus is it may put him in a position to get brought into the inner workings of that community's real estate world and get in on investment deals in real estate that he wouldn't have without those connections. So the podcast serves many things. It builds his brand, shares his expertise. It builds an audience of people who might need a mortgage or refinance in the future. It builds a network of individuals who could refer to him and then potentially bring him in on real estate deals he wouldn't have without those connections. No brainer. Another client of mine wants to transition potentially into different areas, diversify his income stream away from his corporate job. And he has a very special expertise, but no one really knows that expertise outside of his team and some of the people in the industry he works with. So we have a meeting later this month. It's a straight whiteboard series, uh, session. We're going to break down how can we build up his, his personal brand and share it so that he has the opportunity to get paid to speak so he can get into consulting within his uh, profession and to technology building to his profession um, and, and go forth that way and maybe transition out of where he's at into other roles. But the way he's going to be able to do some of that is by getting his voice out there so people can hear his expertise, see his brilliance, and then bring him on their podcast, bring him in to speak and so forth. Without putting himself out there, fewer people are going to know his brilliance and his expertise. And without that, he's not going to reach those other goals. So we need to get his voice heard and content and his brand is the way to do that. And 
countless other clients. Like it's been a lot of it's been a lot of fun lately at RLS World having these conversations and incorporating my love of branding and content creation into my clients' financial plans because it does make its way in there and will make it into your financial plan as well if you're a creative trying to branch out and grow your business. Because if you can build your brand to where you get paid to speak or you get paid to consult, that's more money coming into your personal financial plan that goes in to help you for your goals or build your business or whatever it might be. Invest more. It is a part of your plan. It's, it's almost like, you know, instead of spending money on more education, spending money and time building this brand, building your reputation to be able to market that, to be able to drive more income. We've ta- I've talked about before how I think a strong following and the, the, the um, proof of concept that you can build an audience could potentially be more valuable to an employer or an opportunity than a very nice resume on paper. Um, so if you're a creative, the value of telling your story, expressing yourself and sharing it with the world is you are able to begin to build an audience. And when you build that audience, now you have the capability of new business opportunities and new products, new classes, new courses. You're able to do more when you have this this audience. And without an audience, you don't have those opportunities. And to me, the best way to build an audience is to put content out there. Share yourself. Let people find you that like you. Let people find you who, who want to learn from what it is that you have an expertise in and go from there. I've tried in the past and have made a mistake of trying to cast too wide of a net. And I did that with the beginning of Pursuit. And I'm still in some respects trying to do that. And I think that is a a hindrance to growth, but I'm stubborn and I'm trying to work through doing that, trying to narrow it down. Um, I I think that if you have a specialty, if you have an expertise, zone in on that and go, you know, inch wide, mile deep rather than inch deep, mile wide. Meaning if you've got an expertise that's very specific to a certain demographic or certain niche, live there and just become known for that. And as time goes on, that can widen out to other, other opportunities or other niches or other, uh, other people. That's been one of my fears is trying to go too narrow. I, I, I miss the opportunity to help more people. But if you become an expert in one area, sometimes that expertise can spill into other areas. And by def- you know, within time, an indirect effect of being a specialized expert can mean you spill over into other areas. Example being... You know, maybe you become a, you know, if I go to a financial advisor, you become an expert with doctors and you get to know that really, really well. Well, maybe you become an expert with anesthesiologists as well because they're very connected. But it was that through that expertise with doctors that they started talking about your, you know, quality of work, your expertise to the anesthesiologists they work with. And that's how you convert over. Um, so there's, there's, you know, people talk and sometimes your expertise can spill over. So creating a content strategy to share your expertise in today's world is not very hard. It can be scary if you've never done it before, but we live in a a world where we have an opportunity to take our message and open up the platform. I've talked to my dad a lot and we have our podcast over on All About Your Benjamins. You know, he did speaking before in his profession, but when he was in his career, he didn't have the opportunity to turn on a camera, start hit record, record what he wanted to say and put it out for everybody to find. I have that advantage over him is that I can do it at any time. I can create my audience. I can create my opportunities, especially if what I have to say is meaningful and it can help people. You have that same opportunity. We have a huge opportunity today versus those in the past. And it would be foolish to not take advantage of it. So I want to give you one idea for today's episode and we'll start to build on this before if you've never gotten started with a content idea and you're not quite sure the direction you want to go, the low-hanging fruit to get started is curation. And what I mean by that is creating a regular cadence, could be weekly, could be monthly, daily's tough, but of content for other people to consume that's not even yours. So an example of that is the most consistent piece of content I've put out for a long period of time has been the mixtape over on All About Your Benjamins. I started that really early on, and all it simply was was a curation of articles and blog posts and quotes and things I thought were really valuable for other people to read. And the benefit of curation, while it's not my own content, is I am allowing my following to rely on me to bring them good content. 
if they identify with me, they like what I have and have shared in the past, then they know every week on Sat on Sunday now, they're going to get an email with a bunch of blog posts that they're probably going to like. And they don't have to spend time throughout the week reading to try to find good content. They know I'm going to deliver it to them every week. That's a value. And I think it's a value add that people overlook. They think they always have to be the one creating the original content. And while I do think original content should be a part of your strategy, it doesn't have to be the only thing. And the beauty of curation is if you are constantly reading and learning, you're doing it anyway. Just create a list of the things you read that week that you really liked, share a little blurb as to why, and help other people find great content. And now you have a consistent piece of content. And when you listen to people and read about creating content, consistency is one of the things they say you need to do. Build yourself into the lives of your readers and your followers. It's tough sometimes because life or maybe your creativity isn't there to where you can write every week consistently. It's tough to hit a consistent weekly or even monthly sometimes original piece of content. But it's not that hard to do a regular curation and then fill in between those regular curations with some original thought. And what I would encourage you to think about when you go into creating this original strategy, when it comes to consistency, I don't think consistency has to be regular frequency every Monday morning. It's great if you can do that. But what I have found personally and through talking to other people, when you set that expectation that every Monday I'm going to publish and it's Saturday and you are struggling to find that idea, it creates a lot of stress and anxiety and you're more likely to give up the first time you miss. Where if you say, hey, you can expect a regular curated thing from me because I'm reading anyways. This is really easy to do. And then when I have something important to say, I will share those thoughts with you on an additional blog post. I can't promise to you when it's going to be. My goal is to write no less than once a month. But, you know, if I don't have anything valuable to say, I'm not going to waste your time just by publishing. And I think people will appreciate that. And if you're up front from the get go, you know, that's what the expectations are. And as you write to fill in the gaps and you get to become a better writer, or this could be recording for podcasts or video as well. But as you create in between and you get stronger and you find that voice, consistency may become a little bit easier. But I would be really careful to say, all right, I'm going to produce every Monday morning, no matter what. I think that's a tough goal to hit right out the gate, and it sets you up for more failure. If you look at the average podcast, I think it's after five episodes, the majority of podcasts disappear. So if you've published more than five or six podcasts, you're in the top 1% of podcasts because so many people drop. It's tough to consistently come up with ideas. It's tough to consistently come up with guests. And you're trying to do this most likely while you're working a job or being a parent or being a spouse or being a significant other. It's not necessarily easy. So don't overcommit yourself to where you're setting yourself up for failure. Pick something easy you can do regularly, get you consistency, it builds a base, and then fill in with original thoughts. And the more you do that, I think it's easier to find your voice and then begin to get a little more consistent. Say, okay, now I can do weekly. You know, I started off with a weekly email for financial advisors in the past. I moved it to twice a month. And then when I stopped trying to work with financial advisors and build a business there, I stopped it altogether. For the most part, with a few exceptions, hitting a Saturday email for Weekly Pursuit has been really easy for me. I found that voice. I found that cadence. I can commit to that. Doing a Monday podcast, I can commit to that. But I've had to work into it and ease into it. And this has been seven years of easing into it. You know, Pursuit might be four or five months old, but I've been creating for seven years. I've been working on finding my voice, learning how I create best learning what's, what works for me, what doesn't, to get to this point. It takes time. So my, my advice would be, yes, it's great to produce every, day, every week on the same day and drop at the same time. And if you can do that, definitely do it. There's a lot to be said for it. But if you can't, consistency can also mean people know they're going to get stuff from you. Reg, you know, They're going to get stuff from you. They just don't know exactly when. And that was what I did as I built up All About Your Benjamins. I was doing podcasts. Sometimes you might get three podcasts in two weeks and you wouldn't get another podcast for another month. But in between, you're getting the weekly mixtape, you're getting a written piece. And I tried to make it to where when I was sharing, I had something valuable. And that's kind of where the Daily Pursuit comes back in. I can't say that the Daily Pursuit was high quality every single time because I needed to have a daily podcast. I don't think it was bad, but I don't think the quality of the Daily Pursuit will be will match the quality of what's going to come down the road because now I have more time to be more intentional. I can take my time and make sure I think it's higher quality. So, you know, 
Not that there's any right way to do things. There's a lot of experts out there who would tell you different things. But from my experience, I think I would I would adopt that I'm going to consistently pr- produce content, meaning I'm going to regularly be creating, but I can't give you a regular publishing schedule other than I'm going to have a link fest every week of what I enjoyed the most from reading. That would be a good place to start. So um, with that, this episode's getting a little bit on the long side, so we'll kind of wrap that up for today's episode. It's great to be back. We'll build on this for more because, again, talking about building your brand, talking about building a content strategy is going to be more of what we're talking about in, in amongst following your passions and how to do that, but it's going to be a part of the conversation. So low-hanging fruit, whatever it is that you're reading on a weekly basis, copy and paste. Write a little blurb, take a quote from it that you like, organize it, and start publishing it. In the future, we'll talk about should you do an email, should you do a blog, do you do a podcast, how do you figure all that out? It's really going to be personalized to you and what you enjoy the most and what's easiest for you to get going. And then you can stack and build above that. But for now, I think embrace your inner creator. Start sharing your thoughts and low-hanging fruit, curate something. James uh, uh, James Clear has a 3 two, one So there's six things he's sharing every week that are meaningful. It doesn't have to be a lot. The sharing is a benefit to other people. You're saving people time. And in that, you're giving people an opportunity to learn more about your interests and get insight to who you are. You can even, as you get comfortable with the sharing, write a little blurb. Here's what I'm thinking about this week. Or here's what these articles down below and podcasts made me think about and share your thoughts a paragraph before they get into your thing. Just start doing that and getting comfortable with it and watch where things go. So thanks for tuning in as always. I'm glad to be back. Consistency is coming back next week. Monday, we'll have some motivation. I'll be coming to you live from California at the Future Proof Conference. Friday, we'll have another episode of Pursuit. I'll make sure to record it during the week so I can have the ocean in the background. And then Saturday, you'll have the weekly Pursuit. No more breaks. And the final thought is, I'll just say, last week, I can't tell you as much as I wanted to hit record, as much as I wanted to hit send on the podcast, on the, the, the newsletter, it was refreshing to take a break. Once you start creating content, If you feel like you need a break, take a break. Even if it's more than one or two weeks, take a break. People will miss it. You might lose a couple followers, but it's okay. Don't create if you don't feel like creating. The best creating comes when you're excited and you're motivated and your inner creator is inspired. If you're forcing it, it's not going to be your best work. And I do think in the long run, quality over quantity wins. Quantity is great, but if it's not very good, who cares if you're putting a whole bunch out there? So don't be afraid to take a break either. The only thing is don't let that break turn into never coming back. You got to get back on. You got to start producing, but take a break. People will forgive you. They know you're human. They know you have things going on. I'm not going to hold it against you. If they are going to hold it against you, they weren't great uh, community members of yours anyways. So good riddance to them if they're not going to understand that, hey, I was just exhausted. I needed a break. I needed a Saturday where I wasn't getting up early and hopping on the computer and just some time for myself. Come back, I'm better, I'm refreshed, the content's gonna be great. You won't miss that one week. You won't even remember that I missed. So don't be afraid to take a break if you need to either. If you need that permission to do so, there's your permission. Um, Consistency does not always have to be every single week with no misses. Um, And with that, I will finally let you go. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me on my pursuit. It is an honor to be a part of yours and let's keep pursuing.